Greetings, fellow traveler. Hope this message receives you well. Today, I want to share a, a brief story, something that I learned about myself. So hopefully, it'll help you as well. When I begin to question my reality, my surroundings, uh, relationships, I begin to journal. And when I journaled, I was not only, I had been journaling on and off for some years, but at this time I had a different purpose. So when I start writing down these thoughts, recording my dreams, things of that sort, I begin to see how it's creating my reality. Very helpful. Very helpful because at a moment, I'm, I'm thinking of one dream specifically to really, uh, man, it tripped me out. I'll be honest with you, trip me out. So I go to sleep peacefully, meditative right before. I'm in a good place. I have this dream where I have this conflict with my family. Now, mind you, that had already played out in real life. So I was wondering at this time, because I wasn't communicating with this part of my family, why would I be thinking about them? Why would they be coming into my dream? And it was so interesting because the conflict was in a household. And the more I resisted their attacks, the more I overpowered them, the more they multiplied. Then it became old friends that were coming. Then a whole busload of people came outside the house and they were all working to silence me. When I woke up, that's... That's interesting. That's a trip, you know. Later that day, I get invited out to a lunch then. I mean, to a, a lunch. I don't want to say date. A lunch meeting, if you will. So, I get there, and the people that I'm with are close. They're not blood, but, you know, they're close to me in my life. As I watch the situation play out, I could feel that the energy was off. I could feel that there was something being talked about that wasn't openly being expressed. It was very passive aggressive, very subliminal. So I sat, ate my meal, and just paid attention. Then I picked up the thread of the conversation. Oh, these people are attempting to belittle me. They're attempting to triangulate me. Okay, okay. I sat with it. I watched everything going on to make sure. And then I thought about the dream. I said, this is it. It's not the literal family members, but these are people who are close to me in my life at that time. This is them taking shots, making an attempt to silence me. So what did I do? I started talking and when I started talking you can feel their spirit being rattled I'm not talking about cowering down or being scared I'm talking about when I started speaking my truth you could see the discomfort in them you can see that they wanted to lash out it was an inner rage to me simply being truthful ignited it taught me something for one Pay more homage to those dreams. They are symbolic in nature. For two, listen to the message and move accordingly. See, during during that whole meetup, it's not as if I was speaking my truth and it was shutting them up. No. Just as it did in the dream. I spoke my truth from an authentic place. From a, hey, this is me. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I'm not going to do. It bothered them so much that they would get hyped up, hyped up. It unsettled their spirit. That was the rage boiling up. I made my peace with it. And even all the way up to the end of that lunch meeting, it was still hostility. It was so subtle, but because I can pick up on that, it was, it was screaming at me like it was loud. I can feel the energy. But to the average onlooker, it was subtle. 
I'm sharing these things to say throughout that moment. Not only was I proud of myself for being true to who I am and speaking that without having to knock anybody else for what they believe. But when I left, I'm riding home and I had some people riding with me. It was amazing to see that the same people that carry that hostility and that rage in that environment changed up and began to mirror me when they were outside of that environment. It showed me what was at play with something way bigger than me. I already knew it going in, but at that point I realized that's part of your power. As an individual, this is not just about me. This is me reminding you that you have power as well. And you have to realize that sometimes when you speak your truth, when you speak your peace, it's going to ignite war within others. Okay, sirrah, sirrah, what will be, will be. We all got our cross to bear. That's okay. It's not even uh, I'm better than them or they're better than me. It's nothing about that. It's simply trusting in myself and being able to understand what happens when I trust in myself. See, we all see this every day. We all encounter this kind of energy every day. But it's the way that we relate to it that determines how it plays out, how we interpret it, and how we would deal with it moving forward. I'm not here to preach, go out and conquer the world. It ain't about that. I'm sharing with you a testimony from my journey that simply reminds me and hopefully reminds one of you. You have to trust in yourself. Don't take things at face value. If I took the dream at face value, I'd have been waiting for that situation to play out just as it did in my dream with those exact people. It wasn't about the, the literal perception. It was the essence of the dream. You will be under attack. Within 12 hours of waking up, I was under attack. And because I had already dealt with it in the dream, I knew the position I had to take. It doesn't matter if they multiply. It doesn't matter. It's a bunch of minions. It doesn't matter. That's what kind of, that's what demon energy is. It's a bunch of minions. Just a bunch of little, little things building up like Voltron trying to get you. But when one person stands in their power, stands no chance. Because that's the true essence of self. That's the power of God within us that we exercise. So I'm sharing this once again to say, honor yourself, honor your intuition, honor your dreams. But know that when you move in that light, when you move from that power, which is true self-love, it'll bother them. It'll rattle others because they don't recognize self-love. Hurts. It hurts. And I could speak this from that experience of, you know, I stepped into my true power. But in my past, I've also spoken from that place of, I didn't know love for myself. So even if it came my way, it would invoke some kind of rage in me. It's not about being perfect. I own that about myself. But when you know better, you do better. When you do better, you move better. It's a whole nother kind of reality. So embrace yourself. Love yourself. This is not about being egotistical. No, because we all flawed. That's okay. It's about operating from God's love and knowing what it looks like when that message comes to you. That those that have the ear hear, that those that have the eye see. It's quite simple. It's just not always easy. With these things said, I send love and blessings your way. And until next time, be blessed.